I'm going to introduce you to the HTML validator. The HTML validator will validate your HTML and it's an excellent tool to use whenever you hand code web pages to ensure that you haven't made any errors and that your code has been structured in the appropriate way. This is the web page that we were working on in the last few lessons and this is what it looks like in the browser. As you can see, my web page is displaying just fine in the browser. It doesn't look like anything is wrong. I've made some changes to my code, so there's specifically some errors in my code. Now, when I look at my code inside of brackets, you can see that there's a lot of red text. So already, this should be a visual clue to me that there is some sort of error inside my code, because normally your code is not going to display with this red text. This may or may not be the case. I actually have several errors in my code. One of them is making the text turn red, which would be a visual clue in the editor. The other error that I have created is not forcing the text to be red, but it is something that I should fix in order for my page to be coded correctly. We're going to be using the validator as a tool so that we can check this. The validator that I recommend that you use is the W3C's HTML validator. You can get to this validator by typing validator.w3.org. Now there's several different options on how you can use the validator. The first option is to validate by URI. In order to do this you would have to have your website hosted externally on the web. If you do have your website hosted externally on the web you can type in your address starting with the HTTP and you would put the complete address and then ask the validator to check the page. If you chose this tab, which is validate by file upload, you can actually navigate and upload the HTML file that you want to check. So you would click this button right here, navigate to the file, and then you would upload the file and check it. The method that I recommend that you use is to validate by direct input. I'll go ahead and select validate by direct input. I'm going to go back to my HTML editor and I'm going to select all the text. So I would use select all or I'm using the keyboard shortcut of command or control A. Then I'm going to use edit copy or I'll use the keyboard shortcut of command or control C. Then I'm going to go back into the validator and I'm going to paste the markup into this window right here and then I'll click check. Once I've clicked check, the validator will run through the validation process and if there's any errors, I will get a red banner at the top that lets me know that this page has some errors. So you can see I, my page has three errors and one warning. If you scroll down a little bit farther on the page, you'll be able to find out what the errors are. The warnings are not as important to look into as the errors. You definitely want to solve all the errors. Sometimes the warnings are things that the validator may draw your attention to, but they're not going to cause problems in any web browser. The ones that we're concerned with are the errors. And you can see that right now I have three errors. The validator tells you information about each specific error. So you can see the first error occurs at line 16, column 141 and it says end tag for element P which is not open and then it gives me some information about what's wrong then it will have a description now sometimes you may not understand what the validator is trying to tell you and you might not understand the description that's okay the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check this particular line in your HTML page and find out what the problem is We'll come back to this error in just a second because I want to actually fix this error first. You can see the next error that I have occurs on line 18, column 39, and it said literal is missing closing delimiter. Now again, you might not understand what that means, but it will give you a sample of the area in which the error occurs, and then it might give you some text right here that says, did you forget to close a double quote mark? And if we look through the code, you can see that on my self padding, I open my quote, but I don't close the quote. So it actually is identifying, in this case, the exact location where my error is. The next error that I have is letting me know something that a character is not allowed here. This error is very close to the second error that we have and this error is actually going to resolve itself once we fix this second error. So let's go fix the second error. I'm going to go back into my code editor. I'm going to find the location and if you're using an HTML editor 
you can turn on the line numbers which is very helpful because it told us that the error occurred at line 18 so even if I wasn't sure what that meant I at least know the location in my code that I can start to look to resolve that problem this error was pretty straightforward it told us that we were missing a closing quote and you can see when I have cell padding I'm missing my closing quote so if I make a closing quotation mark a couple things happen inside of my editor all of the text changes from being red to being the appropriate colors. So right away, that's a visual clue that we fixed it. You may not have these types of errors because you may catch them in your editor, but depending on the editor that you're using, it may or may not display like mine did. I will save my file and I'm gonna select everything and copy it. I'm gonna go back to the validator and go up to the top, and then I'm gonna select all the text that's currently in here and hit delete or backspace and then I'm gonna use command V or control V on the PC to paste in the text and if I scroll down just a little bit I'll have the option to revalidate so I'm gonna revalidate my code and now when I validate my code you can see that I only have one error so I still have an error because we have the first error that the validator told us about that we had not fixed, but the other two errors resolved. So sometimes when you have an error in your code, it might tell you that you have a ton of errors, but if you just fix the error, some of those errors may go away. So what I recommend is that you go through your code and you fix the errors that you know and that you can figure out first right away and then revalidate your page because some of those errors might just go away. So don't kill yourself trying to go through each error line by line because some of them might just be created by other errors that you've made. The error that we still have is this error that's letting us know that the end tag for the P element is not open. So I know that that occurs at line 16. If I go back into my code and I look at line 16, here I have my opening P tag. Now if I look at the end of this line, I do have a closing P tag, but if I look carefully, you can see that I actually open the P tag and then I have the closing P tag. And this is something very common because if you actually go to create a tag, as soon as you make your closing angle bracket, many of the HTML editors will create the closing tag for you. So sometimes, especially if you're copy pasting or you're working backwards you might end up with an extra closing tag and in this case you can see when I highlight at the beginning of this P tag the paragraph tag closes here I do have a closing paragraph tag over here but this is not actually paired up with an opening tag so it is kind of an irrelevant tag it doesn't really work so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm just going to wanna simply get rid of this extra closing P tag right here. And now if I click on my P tag, you can see that here's where the P tag opens, here's where it closes. I'll save my page and I'm gonna copy everything again. So I'm gonna select everything, I'll copy everything, and then I'm gonna go into my browser. I'll go to the top of the validator and select the code that's currently there and delete it and then I'm going to use edit paste to paste my new code in and now I'll run the validation again by clicking revalidate and this time you can see that my document passed and I have the green bar this is what you're looking for so my document was successfully checked as XHTML 1.0 transitional now it passed I do have a warning but you don't need to really worry about the warnings the warnings are things that might be worth noting but there's something that we're not going to worry about and this particular warning is just letting us know that we don't need the UTF-8 when we're copy pasting the text into the field right here so this error is actually a result of a discrepancy with the direct input mode if we had posted our page on the website we probably wouldn't get this error I would definitely look at the warnings but not worry about them so much however if you do have any errors you need to make sure that you fix them because you want your code to be clean and not full of errors the validator is an excellent tool for being able to catch many errors that you might have and as I showed you at the beginning of this lesson when we displayed this page it displayed okay in this particular browser so even though this page contained errors the browser was still able to to render the page okay. So you can't always just trust the way the page looks in the browser. You want to use a validator to ensure that your page is set up in the correct manner. I will expect that you will run all of your pages through the validator to make sure that you catch any errors or typos or just discrepancies that you might have in your code.